Hey guys, welcome back and ting and ting and ting. Are we going back to Ireland? Yes, we're going back to Ireland. And somebody suggested that I check out this region here because of uh, all the historical uh, value that I will find in it. You understand what I say? And this one is uh, the Boyne Valley. Never heard of it before, but apparently there's some real historical vibes and thing here that would pique my interest. So let's go ahead and YouTube and Sim Simmer and see what the Boyne Valley is all about. Ireland's Boyne Valley is a sacred and vivid landscape where the history of a people can be traced through its monuments. On any given day, you can travel from the mystical and magical world of the Celts through the golden age of early Christianity and onto modern towns and wide open spaces. The Boyne Valley, the cradle of Irish culture and history, is waiting to be explored. All right. The Boyne Valley lies in the northeast of Ireland, a short journey from Dublin. The valley flows through counties Mead and Louth before opening to the Irish Sea at Drogheda. The first of the Irish peoples were farmers and warriors. The ancient High Kings of Ireland were inaugurated at the Hill of Tara, the most sacred site on the island. Hill forts and megalithic sites are scattered all along the Boyne Valley. Huh. The Loch Crew Cairns in the east of the Boyne Valley are some of Ireland's most ancient structures. The most significant and impressive of these prehistoric sites is at Brune of Winyard, dominated by three large passage tombs. The largest of these is Newgrange. The photography of this stuff is brilliant. There are brilliant. over 700 decorated stones around Newgrange. Built in the Neolithic period, it is 500 years older than the pyramids of Egypt. Wow! Deep within its chamber, at the winter solstice every year, a beam of light pierces the darkness and illuminates the central chamber. The story of an ancient people comes to life in a feat of science and religion. Wow. Newgrange is thought to be the oldest surviving deliberately aligned structure in the world. Now, when I was a kid, man, I used to, okay. When I was a kid, I used to daydream about places like this, you know what I mean? And as I've said it before when I watch videos like this, it's just to go sit there and close my eyes and try to teleport myself back to that time, you know? And what their lives were like, what their lives were like, you know, what were they doing back then, you know? What, and as a kid, I always wondered what were kids doing back then? What kind of games do they play? They didn't have television. They didn't have, you know, all these uh, modern amenities. Were they running around under the moonlight? Did they play hide and seek? You know, what, how did they entertain themselves? You know what I mean? And I would daydream about that all the time. And as an adult, I still want to do that, but then I want to do it from an adult perspective, which sometimes is not as fun because of, you know, all the wars and stuff that was going on, you know what I mean? I don't know if there was wars going on at that period of time in this spot, but, you know, just to think, these people walked there. And I mean, you could just walk the earth and be walking in history because, you know, hundreds and thousands of people have walked here before I did. But it's not the same feeling because I'll be walking, like I'm walking on the street here, this is a modern place, you know what I mean? But to walk in a place where the old things have been maintained, and you know that somebody actually sat there five, six, seven, eight hundred years ago, that's a nice, a nice teleporting type feeling that, that you could have. Let's keep going here. Yeah. lies at the heart of the Boyne Valley. Early Christian monks in Ireland settled in the most isolated and beautiful of locations to seek the face of God and convert the primitive Celts. The High Cross of Murdoch, carved from a single block of sandstone, has been used as a teaching cross where people would gather to hear the story of the Bible. These ringed crosses became the ultimate symbol of Celtic Christianity. Elephant Abbey became one of Ireland's most powerful and influential monasteries and has high kings and queens buried in its grounds. 
Completed in 1220 to rule the kingdom of Meath, Trim Castle is the largest and best preserved wow. Anglo Norman castle in Ireland. Its walls, towers, and gatehouses have been at the centre of Ireland's long history of military campaigns. And yeah. Battles. I mean, just sitting here watching that, think of the battles that were going on there, you know, uh, attacking forces and uh, the defending forces fighting and knowing that, they, were, you know, they were, these people are coming and stuff. And I used to dream about this kind of stuff too because of the movies I watch, you know, on the documentaries I've seen, but mainly the movies that depict these old uh, ancient times and things, you know what I mean? With no electricity or anything like that. I wonder if I would be as scared of the dark then as uh I'm not petrified of it, but I'm not a big fan of the dark. <laughs> St. Peter's Church is one of the finest Gothic revival churches in Ireland and dominates the skyline of the town of Drogheda. Built and carved out of local limestone and lavishly decorated, it holds the head of Oliver Plunkett, an Irish saint who died for his Catholic faith in 1681. The Boyne Valley is rich in 16th and 17th century architectural gems wow. that are accessible all year round, such as Beaulieu House, a 17th oh, century house with a Dutch style unique in Ireland. Slane Castle sits in the 1,500-acre estate and is one of Ireland's most famous 18th-century grand houses. The Battle of the Boyne is one of the most significant events in Irish history, and a visitor centre can be found at the restored 18th-century Old Bridge House, located on the actual battle site. Here, in July 1690, Protestant King William won out against Catholic King James, retaining the English throne and ensuring the continuation of Protestant supremacy in Ireland for the next 250 years. Music and culture are the lifeblood of the Boyne Valley, and visitors, both young and old, can take up the opportunity to learn traditional Irish set dancing or learn how to make and bake brown bread, a skill I'd like to learn how to do that. From generation to generation. Learning the barrel can also ensure you experience the beat of the ball. Traditional Irish music thrives in pubs, clubs, and other musical venues the length of the Boyne Valley. A perfect end to the day. Oscar Wilde's father wrote that the history of Ireland can be traced through the monuments in the Boyne Valley. History, ancient heritage and culture flow through the Boyne Valley, reflecting the pulse of a people that is as strong today as it was 3,000 years ago. The Boyne Valley region has a wide range of quality accommodation available all year round that caters for all tastes and budgets. For more information, pick up a copy. No, no, that's an interesting place. It definitely is, you know, with all that uh, ancient history and stuff. Uh, and and uh, even if it's like partially ruined, it's still preserved. And you can still walk the grounds of the people who have walked there before. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool, y'all. I'll leave a link in the description to this video so y'all can go check that out and thing. And, uh, hey... I hope you guys are having a great day. Y'all take care of each other, alright? Cool runnings.